Can you give some examples useful for lawyers, some examples of how prompt engineering may help uh, while using these tools? Our report, a global report on state of AI and law shows that mostly what lawyers need is document generating, document summarizing, and work with automation of documents. This is what lawyers would love to obtain from AI-based tools. Mm -hmm. So I suppose uh, prompt engineering in this situation is, is quite useful for, for them. Yeah, so summarization and generation are kind of standard things that are in there. You don't need to do much, but then if you want to prevent it from hallucinating things, so making up things which were actually not the input, we get to the end, then you need to do more advanced things. Okay. So that fighting this hallucination is pretty difficult. So basically, because this thing there underneath ChatGPT is a kind of a difficult to control everything is about controlling so this supervised training of the intents or what i call alignment with particular examples is a way of controlling the system to behave in a particular way they so they will train it not to produce hate speech and this is done in a particular way through reinforcement learning to make this behavior even more strong in an automated way the other one is prompt engineering. So you you be very explicit in the way you give your instructions and also not only to trigger it, but also to control the output in, a, in an explicit way. And the last thing is what I mentioned is what people do now is not to use this system as the general intelligence to get the answers from, but use something else, which basically is a retrieval system and only use GPT uh, to instruct it to summarize the result of the retrieval. And then you have more control over the information that is being used to generate an answer. So this is the picture coming from the GPT-3 paper, uh, which summarizes the way they created these different intents on top of the GPT-3 model. These uh, demonstration data is actually data created by mostly scientific community that was demonstrated to how you can fine tune large language models, among which GPT-3 to have a good performance in, for instance, translation or in summarization or in question answering. And so that I said, I saw from the use of GPT-3, how people prompted their system uh, to produce well on these tasks. They have at 40 people working uh, internally in, in, in OpenAI to go through the data and I pick out the ones that work well, according to them. And then this selection was used to fine tune the model. So fine tuning the model means that the representations of let's say our word star will be changed again, such that the system in its predictions will show the right behavior, like giving a correct answer to a question or translating it to English to German or uh, summarizing text. So this provides the initial functionality of, uh, of, of ChatGPT. And then they say, okay, I'll take this version of the system and uh, for a whole uh, number of different tasks, just produce the top 20 results. And then they hired uh, people in low wage countries like Kenya or uh, other countries to go through the top 20 results and then rank them. And they got all various instructions how to how they had to do this. So these human rankings of the output of Chat GPT, let's say the top twenty results, from these rankings, they then trained a system to do the ranking. And if you have a system that can kind of rank possible outputs that it generates, that can be used as a reward function in reinforcement learning. And that is another machine learning technique where now you kind of simulate a input from a user. The system generates 20 responses, but now the automated re-ranker will rank, re-rank the responses. And then a system needs to adjust the weights internally in order to come closer to the re-ranked responses. And it can do this in iteratively in many, many times. And that automated reinforcement learning will kind of reinforce the behavior of the rankers, the human rankers in the second part of the system. So 
these were the kind of things that they used in the first phase. Eh? So most of the task data that they had was for generation. Uh, Q&A was 12% brainstorming. They had some examples, chat, and you can see that this is a pretty limited list. And a kind of a training prompt would be for brainstorming, list five ideas, how to regain enthusiasm for my career, or write a short story. And then they had good answers and bad answers and use that to make the internal representation of the system better. Uh, prompt engineering, they have here a whole guideline on this. Uh, where they tell you exactly how to uh, control the behavior of the system according to your wishes. And they have some kind of basic tips how to do it. So don't tell the system only what to do, but also show it with examples. Uh, uh, and uh, if you do this, make sure you use very clear and examples and not complicated ones. And also make use of the temperature settings. Basically, if the system is making a prediction and generating something. Um, it has, of course, the most probable uh, prediction, but it can do a so-called beam search through alternative ones. So for instance, um, you can take the most probable next word and then the most probable next word. So take the second probable next word and then the most probable next word, or the first most probable next word and then the second most probable next word you get a slightly different answer you can imagine that you can define all kinds of different paths through the all the possible answers depending on the temperature it will just look more through alternative paths than just taking the most probable one and you get a more creative results depending on what you want this can be useful or not useful of course, the issues which are now really well known is it's associative, as I said, it's not indexing and therefore it hallucinates. And according to their own paper, GPT-3 hallucinates in a very straightforward task, like your question answering, 41% of the cases and chat GPT reduces it to 21, but that's still substantial. Mm -hmm. And this is given this very specific task. And I told you, uh, if you ask questions about Johann Sebastian Bach or Beethoven, it's very likely that what it hallucinates is the right answer, and that doesn't count as a hallucination. If you ask questions about long tailies or less frequent things, chances are that the hallucination is wrong, and that counts as a hallucination. So it depends a lot on how you evaluate this, what proportion of hallucination you will get. And the other problem is, there is no transparency. There is, if it comes up with an answer, it cannot point to where the answer comes from. It lost the connection to the pre-training sources. And therefore it cannot acknowledge or give credits to this either. And the problem of course is also that uh, it has seen pre-training data up to a certain point in time, and it changes coming afterwards since it's not an index, so it's not updated. It cannot adjust that either. Uh, the other issue is that the, the ethics of what and how they filter is based on the 40 annotators that designed the basic functionality and instructed the people that uh, did uh, the ranking, uh, what uh, to call toxic, for instance, uh, what a bias is, uh, to see if they can correct the system uh, for their behavior. And that ethics is now determined by OpenAI, the company, a small group of people and is totally out of our hands. And then what we see is that even though they, uh, the, this behavior of ChatGPT is continuously changing because they patch it in many different ways. If they see that people try to abuse it in a certain way, they will patch it, but then people will find other ways in getting around it. So even if they try to make it not, for instance, do things that this is supposed to do. So it will tell you, I'm just a humble AI, I cannot do this, or I'm not, I should not do this. Um, then you can kind of uh, prompt it in a slightly different way and it will still do it. And since there are infinite ways of prompting it, it's uh, very difficult for them to prevent this from happening. 
But it's getting better and better, as I noticed. The prom needs to be more and more specific or strange and yeah. pretending something. Uh... Yeah, that's true, because I see these examples and this usage, and then that people report this also to them, and I try to patch it. But on the other hand, that the more and more this happens, the more bleach the system gets as well. So at some yes. point, they'll only give very obvious, hypercorrect answers. Mm -hmm. And the question is whether, whether you want that. So this is an example here that uh, Gary May Marcus, when, the, when he gave a, two, a keynote at uh, one of our major conferences in 2022, he came up with this example, what, what kind of a, a reply uh, chat tpt uh, could give uh, which is uh, uh, if you prompt it in a certain way it will come up with an answer and, and this answer it could be very harmful uh, because where did this, does it get this information from that uh, that uh, crust of porcelain could be nutritious uh, as a, as a baby uh, milk uh, actually if you would do it now again then it doesn't do it anymore. So this is an example where this answer is patched. And it says, I must emphasize it's not advisable, safe to blah, 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 blah. So I just saw this keynote talk and just corrected this system. But you cannot do this infinitely uh, for mm -hmm. everything. And there will be another way because I now have literally the question that he used to get that answer. If it start to change this somehow, it can still get the previous answer. Um, okay, so this is another example of hallucination. This is a colleague of mine, uh, uh, AI professor, and he did this. He does this regularly with ChatGPT. So you can also ask uh, what ten books did Frank Verhelmen write, and if you do that, it, it finds information about him that he's a computer scientist and a professor, and what uh, he's actually specialized in artificial intelligence and knowledge representation. All of that is correct. And since 2022, these are the books that he calls. Now, the first one is correct. The second one, he could have written and he collaborates with these people, but it's not correct. And uh, the third one is completely made up. It doesn't exist. And you can start uh, try to look for this. Uh, you won't find it in, the, in, in Google Scholar. It was very loud about lawyers who cited some hallucinated judgments or the deci court's decisions. Yeah. Uh, so using ChatGPT, they they received a list of judgments supporting some some opinion or idea and just copy pasted it into into uh, court papers. And they they were fine. There are a few examples from the states, but also from other um, uh, countries. So why does it hallucinate some data and some are proper? So we, I, we ask it to, to, for books. So, so it's kind of triggered to come with multiple books. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and, and so if you would ask it for 10 books, it will come back with 10 books. Sometimes actually it, it cannot count very well. It will be eight or maybe 12. But it is kind of triggered. Oh, I need, really need to produce this. And so the first one here, it's actually has seen it in training data. So it is a very high probability. Uh, and, and it outputs this, and it's, it's, it is actually correct. But then it needs to come up with an alternative. And uh, as I told you, well, it can also go to the second choice and, uh, and the third choice, and then combine it with the, 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 the next word with the second or the third or the fourth, et cetera, et cetera. So it can, so maybe the most probable answer that it can give is the first one. <laughs> and that is then uh, uh, that probability makes it produce a correct title. But since I force it to come with others, it needs to make up something because it's actually making up something always and just sometimes happens to be the correct. Okay. Sometimes not. So that's where it starts to become creative. Okay. And it doesn't know what it doesn't know. It just okay. it can associate everything with everything. And the longer this list is, the more absurd the books will be. Uh, I was testing uh, Llama 3, which is a meta uh, from, as a model for meta, uh, uh, recently released a couple of weeks ago. And uh, someone was giving a talk about uh, social values, uh, Schwartz values. And I, uh, and I thought, okay, let's try the model. Uh, tell me what are the, what are the Schwartz values? And, it, and there, are, there are 10 values, and it came back with five. Uh, and and one of the, the, some of them are really wrong, 
And uh, so I told it like, okay, but I think this is also a swatch value. And then it will tell you, yeah, 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 sorry, 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 you're right. And then it came up with again as a list and it actually took my suggestion, but then changed it a little bit. It created something else because apparently what I suggested was not coming out of it strongly, but by triggering it, it had to give it. And just continuing until I had 14 charge value as an answer, even though there are 10. I did the same with ChatGPT, same thing happened there again. It was a little bit better than Llama, but in principle, it cannot resist answering you unless somebody builds a filter telling you if you get this kind of question, don't answer.